Hey, it's Brett, and there's a really cool thing happening in our skies this week, and that is the Eta Aquarian meteor shower. So when we say meteors, we mean shooting stars. This is bits of ice and rock that have fallen off a comet or an asteroid, in this case, Halley's Comet, burning up in our Earth's atmosphere. And as it burns up, it produces these brilliant streaks of light that we call a meteor or a shooting star. Now, in order to see this, you want to look towards the north and east, uh, but you don't focus on one single point in the sky. And that is because as the meteors enter the Earth's atmosphere, they can start burning at different places. So sometimes they'll burn maybe right overhead or on the side of you. So to maximize your chance of seeing the meteors, you want to have the clearest view possible, again, towards the north and east. Now, this meteor shower is happening this week in May, peaking on the 6th and 7th of May in the early morning hours. So the early morning hours here are kind of from about 2 to 3 a.m. all the way till sunrise. Now, this is for two reasons. One, the point of where the meteors are entering, called Eta Aquarius, near that star, Eta Aquarius, so that's where they're coming in, uh, that's high enough in the sky so we don't lose it in the trees and low city lights. And two, the moon will have set by then. So when the moon is brightened out, uh, the brightness of the moon can kind of wash out some of those fainter meteors. Now, if you're in a really dark spot, you can see potentially anywhere between 30 and 60 meteors or shooting stars an hour. So literally one every couple of minutes. Now, the more into the city you go, you can still see them, but you won't see them as often. So to maximize your chance for seeing a meteor in a, uh, during the meteor shower, darkest spot possible, clearest spot possible, but you don't need any special equipment. You don't need cameras. You don't need telescopes. You just need a clear view. Now, the other trick with the meteor is a lot of people will say, hey, I'll set my alarm at 4 a.m., go outside. I spend five minutes and say, I didn't see anything. Well, you actually need your eyes to adjust, right? If you ever wake up in the middle of the night, you need your eyes to adjust a few minutes to walk around so you can see where you're going. Same thing with going outside. Give yourself a good 10 minutes, a little bit longer is better, uh, for your eyes to adjust and to see these meteors. And so if you stare, again, May 6th, 7th, in the early morning hours, kind of 3 a.m., 2 a.m., 3 a.m. till sunrise, hopefully you should see quite a few of nature's fireworks lighting up in the sky for you. So let's do a little demonstration about how a meteor shower happens. Now, for this, we need three things. We need our sun, this orangey marble. Our blue marble is obviously the Earth. And then we have our comet that will come into the solar system. So, as we know, our Earth goes around the Sun in a fairly circular orbit. We go around the Sun every 365 and, and a bit days, about a quarter of a day. Uh, and it's in essentially the same orbit every time, meaning we pass over pretty much the same area in space every time as this goes around. Now, so we have our Earth. Now we're going to have our little comet come in. Now our comet uh, is going to travel through space. And as it travels through space, these are essentially just dirty snowballs. And bits of it melt and leave quite a messy trail as it goes around the sun. And this trail is essentially bits of rock and ice that have fallen off this meteor or comet or asteroid. Now, as this Earth goes around the sun, doo -doo 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 -doo, all of a sudden we're now in the mess left by the comet. And as we travel through the comet, you actually see that we're now kind of soaking up or destroying a lot of this bit that fell off. And what's actually happening is, in this case, the sugar is now slamming into the earth, the marble, and burning up in our sky as a meteor shower. And as we go around some cases, we hit it a second time. And this is the case with the Eta Aquarius because it's caused by Halley's Comet. We actually have it two times a year because Halley's Comet goes around the sun in a fairly elliptical orbit. Some comets only do one time, so we only pass it through once. So with the meteor shower, because we're always passing through the same spot in space roughly at the same time, happens at the same time every year. Hence making it a regular event and an annual meteor shower. So for this Eta Aquarian meteor shower, we are seeing bits of rock and ice that have fallen off Halley's Comet. And as Halley's Comet does its orbit around the sun every 76 to 77 years, it leaves rock and ice that the Earth goes through. And in fact, Halley's Comet's quite unique. Because of its orbit around the sun and the Earth's, 
We have two meteor showers from uh, Halley's Comet, the Eta Aquarius, happening this week, and the Orionids in about six months' time. And other meteor showers are caused from lots of other comets. In fact, an asteroid, 3200 Phaethon, causes one of them. And meteor showers are also a bit hard to predict how many you're going to see. We can roughly figure out the rate, but it really depends on how much rock and ice and bits are in that exact path. So every year has a little bit of variation. So some years are really good and some years are not as much. Um, so it's always worth checking out because you never know it's going to be the spectacular year. And I'd love to hear in the comments that if you've ever seen a meteor shower, what you saw heaps in the, in the evening or nighttime sky. Things like the Perseids uh, in the Northern Hemisphere in August produce so many meteors, sometimes hundreds a year, that the sky just lights up. So I'd love to hear about some of your meteor shower stories and spotting it and how this one turns out for you this week. And make sure to like and subscribe on YouTube uh, to help me make some more videos that we can all enjoy for space.